Out of nowhere, Sony releases the first PlayStation 5 information via a Wired article and we learn a lot about the new hardware that has been in development for 4 years now and will not be coming in 2019. So likely in 2020. Let's go over all the important details that you need to know about in this video. If you enjoyed that, then a like would be super appreciated and let's go. Let's start with some of the major takeaways. One being that the system, unlike the PS4, will be backwards compatible. So yes, you can play your PlayStation 4 games on this new hardware and doing that should drastically improve them. Examples they note is way faster loading times. So when Mark Cerny, the lead architect for this system, just like he was for the PlayStation 4 and the PS4 Pro, went to developers as early as fall 2015 he asked them what they wanted from this new PlayStation. And one thing he heard many times was, I know it's impossible, but can we have an SSD? So yes, they're going with that for this next PlayStation. Well, actually a more specialized one. Cerny claims that it has raw bandwidth higher than any SSD available for the PCs right now. And he also notes that the raw read speed is super important, but also the details of the input and output mechanisms and the software stack that they put on this SSD. So in short, this will be very different from putting an SSD in your PS4. In the Wired article, they use Spider-Man as an example. So yes, because of the backwards compatibility, you can of course play that game on this new system as well. And where the fast traveling from one spot of Manhattan to the other on the PS4 Pro costs like 15 seconds. On the next PlayStation it should cost 0.8 seconds, so it should be almost instant. And they even note in the article that this was demonstrated on an early low speed version of the PlayStation 5. And when recording this video, Jason Schreier from Kotaku, of course well known for his sources, put up a tweet that is very interesting as well, saying that he heard at GDC that one of the big PS5 marketing beats would be no loading times. And it totally falls in line with of course what they detailed here with the Spider-Man example. Jason also says it sounds expensive and that's of course the thing, an SSD is way more expensive than a regular hard drive and if they're really going with the no loading times slogan, they would think that all the PlayStation 5 models or likely the only one that they will release will have an SSD, so how much dollars will that cost when it launches? Also the size of games this generation have been from 50 gigs to even 100 gigs in the case of Red Dead Redemption 2. So if we have an SSD from maybe only 500 gigs or hopefully one terabyte or two terabytes that would either be super expensive or it would be not enough to have more than five games on your system or something like that. And right now with the PS4 we just plug in an external hard drive but on the PlayStation 5 this would not really work because then you do not benefit from the extra loading speed. Another improvement because of the SSD is that the world can now render at a higher speed as well. So where Spider-Man on the PS4 has a speed limit when swinging that is based on the speed at which the world can render. So the speed that the PlayStation can get off the hard drive. And on the next gen console this will be way way faster. The article describes it as if the camera speeds up down like it was mounted to a fighter jet. And that sometimes Cerny would pause to show that the environment still looks super crisp. While normally of course it would still have to load. The PlayStation 5 by the way supports 8K but they showcased this dev kit on a 4K screen. I think this very likely means that we can expect native 4K on the PS5 or maybe even higher higher, where the PS4 Pro has a hard time achieving that of course. Shinobi602 has the specs put together nicely in a tweet. The CPU is an 8 core AMD Ryzen based on the 7nm Zen 2 and the Radeon a Navy based GPU. So that sounds all really really good. And ray tracing is mentioned here as well and that's actually a new high performance graphical technique that was showcased recently at GDC for example with Metro and also with Control. Really focused on creating more realistic lightning and the differences are really really noticeable so this will also be possible on the PlayStation 5 and in that Shinobi 602 tweet we also see that the console indeed supports physical media so it won't be a download only console and I think this also means that you can just put your PS4 discs in this console to have them run but that hasn't been confirmed yet. And speaking of PS4 games another very interesting fact that is noted in the Wired article is as follows. As in many generational transitions this will be a gentle one. 
with numerous new games being released for both the PS4 and this next gen console. Implying that maybe titles that we first thought would be a PlayStation 5 exclusive like Horizon Zero Dawn 2 might be coming to the PS4 instead as well. But that the PS5 version will just have the way better loading times, way better graphics, faster way to traverse the world, maybe flying will be faster on the PS5. Of course pure speculation on my part but I think it's interesting that they very specifically note in the article that there will be a gentle transition between the PS4 and PS5. They also talk about Death Stranding in this article that will of course be out on the PS4 but likely be a cross-gen title as well as Mark Cerny is pretty mysterious about it. But overall I think it's a pretty safe bet. It will just be interesting to see how cross-gen will work because with backwards compatibility you can already play the PS4 games on the PS5 and from the sounds of it that will already bring significant benefits. So will there be more when you buy a PlayStation 5 version of the game instead of using a PS4 version on the PlayStation 5? And I by the way say PlayStation 5 a lot in this video but the name hasn't been announced yet but you would assume that they would go with that right? It also makes sense for this huge leap looking at the info they just released. Are the info discussed in the article is that your current PlayStation VR headset will be supported with the PlayStation 5 but they would not talk about a new VR model just yet only that they are really invested in VR so that will likely mean there is a new one coming down the road but I don't think they want to release that alongside the PlayStation 5. That is at least my bet. Because I really feel that you want to focus on one hardware at a time instead of releasing two around the same time. And it would also be just way too much money to get both. So that's why I think they will likely release the new PlayStation VR at least one year after the PlayStation 5. But that's just me speculating. What we indeed know is that the PS4 headset is usable on the PS5 and that they're likely going to release a new one. Other interesting details regarding the PS5 include a 3D audio, something that you can already get on the PS4, but now there will be a bigger emphasis on it thanks to a new AMD chip that has a custom unit just for that. And if you're not familiar with 3D audio, you can way better hear where the sounds are coming from, like from behind you, next to you. Games like Horizon already have it, and I tried it with that game, and it's pretty impressive. But yeah, out of nowhere, they dropped this info, like, randomly in an article, just like how they announced that they would skip E3, that was also out of nowhere. They're likely feeling the heat from Microsoft, who is taking the stage at this biggest gaming convention to go big, and likely talk about their next-gen plans as well, although there are rumors already that they will start talking about the next Xbox today. So maybe by the time you watch this, we already know some next-gen Xbox info as well. So Sony likely felt that they needed to get ahead of that, and already shared what they were doing because they have been really really silent until this day. By the way while recording this video Microsoft just announced their E3 press conference that we of course knew were coming but now we also know the date so Sunday June 9th they will take the stage. 1 p.m. Pacific time and 4 p.m. Eastern time so like 10 9 p.m. if you live in Europe. And they actually shared more details as well saying that this will be their biggest E3 presence ever and yes they have been really really huge in the past and that they can't wait to share more about what they got up their sleeves for the future. There should be something for everyone at this year's E3. We can expect trailers for unannounced titles coming in 2019 and beyond and in-depth looks at previously announced games. And I totally think that Cyberpunk will be one of them. CD Projekt Red already said that E3 will be their biggest E3 to date. And Microsoft ended of course with the Cyberpunk 2077 sort of reveal trailer at the end of their show last year. So I totally expect more gameplay during this show. They will also have a special inside Xbox live stream with exclusive announcements, game demos, interviews and more so likely we will see Cyberpunk there as well. So that's why I also think that it will be nice to watch this even if you only have a PlayStation because I totally expect third party titles to be there as well. And by the way later today there should also be an inside Xbox stream where they will talk more about their E3 plans and maybe already about the next Xbox as well. Again there are some rumors out there but take it with a grain of salt. But that would explain why Sony wanted to get ahead of Microsoft by releasing this article today ahead of their inside Xbox live stream. So again maybe Microsoft will unveil some things as well well. The console wars is really really on, what an exciting time. Of course we still got a ton of questions though about the PS5, like what are the launch games, when will it launch, will it be March 2020 like the Nintendo Switch, or maybe Fall 2020. And that seems to be the most likely release window, with also Jason Schreier again chiming in that he heard from people that are working on a Fall 2020 game, 
that they indeed expect to release on the next gen console as well. Although we cannot 100% confirm that that is also when the new consoles will launch, it does confirm though that the launch will really happen in 2020. It will be super interesting to follow and I will of course keep you up to date here so totally subscribe for everything on the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation exclusives. Like the video if you liked it and check out my recent video on an actress leaking the existence of Horizon Zero Dawn 2 and more Horizon info. It's pretty interesting, trust me. For now, I will speak to you next time and goodbye.